Kia ora and welcome to Tarmac. I'm Dave. And I'm Matthew and today I'm reunited with an old friend. And I'm not talking about Dave, I'm talking about this. The new Ford Ranger Wild Track. Because I drove this exact car on the New Zealand launch. <laughs> uh, old friend. Anyway, you're right, this is the next generation Ranger and it is the Wild Track, so the top of the range and it is a beauty. Come let's take a look at this. Okay, so what Ford has done for this next generation Ranger is consult both their American truck um, division and also all their customers. And what they've developed is something rather special. I'll get to the dimensions and stuff in a minute, but basically straight up front, you'll see that it's an extra, well, I don't know if you will see it, but you'll notice that it's 50 mils wider. So it certainly is more substantial on the road, but I said, I'll get to the more of the dimensions in a minute. Up front here, you've got a more dominant, more straight up nose and also taller riding height, which apparently is good for if you get hit by it, if you're a pedestrian. Very dominant grille, as you see here, and with a nice, nice striking mesh front to here and a much bigger full badge with a nice sneaky little camera below. The thing down here on the side is that it's basically bookended by these C-clamp alley DRLs. You can just see them around here, both sides. And with this being the wild track, LED lights as well. So plenty going on here. And you'll notice up the front here, a very small approach angle. So when you're going to go off road with this, and I hope you do, it's ready and willing and able to do it. Okay, let's get the dimensions out of the way. So in length, it's 5.37 meters. In height, it's 1.88 meters and in width, 1.91. So it really is quite substantial now. With an extra little bit added on here for the roof rails, which is a wild track sort of exclusive. Again, take a look at these really short uh, overhangs up the front. And this one sits on 18 inch feet. So these nice alloys here. The side vents here are marked up with which um, engine variant you've got. We've got the bi-turbo and there is a V6, but again, I'll get to the stuff under the bonnet in a while. Looking further down, you've got these beautiful side steps that make sure that you can get up to load up anything on the top here. Nice big uh, wing mirrors or rear view mirrors here. And also this sort of sporty bar and stuff here. The other thing of particular note and something that I believe that the designers made sure they kept is this box step. So shorter people like myself don't have to go on here. You can load anything in the back just by putting your foot in this box step. It's great. While we're here, let's look around the rear. Now, admittedly, this does look like the tail end of a ute, so no real surprises there. The big thing to notice here is the fact that Ranger is now embossed in the back tailgate here. This being the Wild Track has the Wild Track uh, thing going on here, so the nameplate, which is good. Nice big Ford badge here. The other thing is the C clamps at the front, although they would be a big capital C, look at these small little C clamps here on the LEDs there. Look at that, so plenty going on there. The other thing, is this shiny thing here, a tow bar, 3.5 ton towing, loads going on there. And this, look at this, this is finger touch for this tailgate. Look at that, it's so light. Oh, look at that, so light. And it opens up to plenty of room here, which I'll get to in a second. But look at these little things here. You've got some areas here that you can put some stuff in if you're tradie and clamp things in there. And also under this little thing here is a ruler so if you're a fisherman you can see the size of your catch or measuring your thing measure it twice remember that and cut once the other thing because of the size of this uh bed here well they've the extra 50 mils this means that this will take a euro sized crate not that i know if you're going to want to put a euro sized crate in here but you can and also when it comes to payload anything from 930 to 1.4 tons so there's plenty of stuff in there Loads of places for attaching things around here, there and everywhere. Power supply. And also this has got the additional top slidey bit. So therefore you can keep all of your stuff safe and sound. Speaking of safe and sound, let's look under the bonnet. Now, like I said, there is a V6 option, should you want one. But what we have here is a two litre bi-turbo diesel engine. And what that gives you is 154 kilowatts of power and 500 newton meters of torque, especially since it's attached to a 10 speed um, gearbox, automatic gearbox with an e-shifter. But we'll get to more of that in a minute. 
The other thing is you'll see it's quite roomy in here and that is because there is plenty of room should they want to future proof it and put some batteries in here and also I'm reliably informed that this will take biodiesel as well so lots going on just in just this small little area here. Now speaking of lots going on Matthew's inside and he'll show you what's going on in there. All right so as Dave just showed you there's so much going on with the outside and well it's the same thing on the inside it's just so many changes that have come into this next generation ranger so anyway i'll take them slowly for you we'll start off with the seats well firstly those in this wild track um option are leather nice and soft too um there's a really sort of distinct gold um goldish slash brownish stitching um, which is traditional with the wild track so even that wild track logo that's stitched into the seat back is in the same goldish um, yellow ochre sort of color and that stitching is flows throughout the dashboard as well so if you look on there more of that stitching plus you get some wild track badging on there the other key thing to note with this part of the dashboard is that there's actually two glove boxes so the first you push up there and then the second one you pull down here so plenty of storage space there plus they've given you some space in there which is actually lined in rubber so if you do put a phone or a wallet or something in there it'll grip it's not gonna uh, move around so they have thought about their target audience if you like for the new ranger design wise there's plenty that has changed in here as well so one key thing is these air vents well the vents or the slats in them are actually mirroring the grill of the the ranger in front so it, it always reminds you of some little touches of the the youth that you are driving they have also thought about where you'll put your phone so there is a, a wireless charging pad down here which is also rubber lined and it's hidden away from the driver and your phone sort of encased so when you are going off road it doesn't fly around anywhere and i have actually tested that out and there's a space over here for something i don't know it fits my ford ranger pen but apart from that i don't know what else goes in there it's two cup holders you've got space underneath the armrest here but the key things with the center console is firstly this new e-shifter it's got a, a sort of claw like shape to it and when you hold it you rock back and forth to change between the gearing and on the right side here for your thumb well that's got the manual control and the plus and minus for the gears to control that 10 speed automatic transmission the other thing is this knob over here now these are your basic drive modes you've got two wheel drive you've got two different four wheel drive modes so there's a high and a low range as well so depending on the off-road terrain that you are going on and then there's some more off-road terrain buttons over here which i'll show you when i'm talking about the screen the other thing with this rotary dial is not only the three buttons in there but also the fact that you can shift between seven different drive modes um, using this knob over here which I'll show you in a minute you can also control the different drive modes from the buttons over here and then lastly the big change here is there's no physical manual handbrake anymore it's a little uh, electronic parking brake there wow that's a lot to get through anyway let's move on to the central touchscreen next this screen well it's a, a 12 inch unit and the biggest talk, talking point here is the orientation has changed so you can see that it's very much like a phone in that sense so when you do mirror your phone onto there everything looks or rather everything is where it should be the key things to note here in terms of the orientation are the way the screen is divided up so firstly you'll see this top portion here well that sort of changes in terms of what you want to see so right now i've got the owner's manual on there but I can, I can actually flick through and look at USB source and choose from the options here to display what I see on the screen up top there. The other thing is, is this bar around here. You can keep flicking through and look at the different options available to you to highlight up here. And then below, you'll see the air conditioning controls. Now, the interesting thing is if you do want to carry out something that's not so complex, like changing the temperature or the fan speed well there's actually shortcut buttons underneath here for that so while you are driving you don't need to take your eyes off the road to operate the air conditioning controls on the screen you can just simply turn the knobs over here and do what you like the simpler operations are all available here 
The other key thing with the screen is firstly two things up top here. You've got the apps drawer over there, so it takes you to Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and your various different audio sources, as well as navigation. Close that and you click on the Ford Ranger icon right there. And well, that opens up to a whole new world for you. So starting off with the camera, you can see your different 360 degree view around. Um, driver assistance, you can turn on that if you like. Towing, this is really cool because when you do have a trailer attached, it will actually adjust the blind spot indicator system to accommodate for that trailer. So it's a really, um, really useful feature for the kind of target audience that um, the Ford Ranger is aimed at. Zone lighting, this is pretty cool as you can light up parts of the outside of the car either via this screen or via your Ford Pass app. And that's really handy for setting up camping equipment, you know, um, if you're out in the wilderness in the darkness where there's no street lights and things, really useful feature for the typical outdoorsy ranger buyer. The next bit there is the off-road camera, so you can see that's on the front, and that actually monitors the, the terrain that you're driving over and then sort of adjusts the, the off-road settings automatically, and it's something amazing to see on a car in this price range and the ranger in particular. The other thing is you'll notice over here that's got an image of a ranger on it and you can actually press that to activate the differential lock um, if you are going into some more tougher off-roading sort of stuff. The other button there is of course hill descent control, another key feature for um, some hardcore off-roading. Close that and you'll head back into this menu here as you just saw the off-road. It also has the automatic parallel parking. Um, and then there's valet mode as well, where you can turn off features so that valet drivers can't, you know, access your phone and all that stuff. I promised I would show you all the different off-road settings, so let's go into that now. This 12-inch fully digital screen, well, that gives you a view of all the different driving modes. Um, so firstly, we are in normal right now, and um, that is basically either two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, but high range. The next one is Eco. Now this is a two-wheel drive mode. Um, and then if I flick down further, we get into the tougher stuff. So you get your towing or hauling mode. Um, next up is Slippery, which activates the four-wheel drive high system automatically. Um, and then if I move next into Mud and Ruts, and then further down into Sand. So you'll see as we get into those last two, the really um, hardcore off-road modes, you activate not only the four-wheel drive high range system but also the diff lock you can see that's turned on and then the gauges on there have changed as well so it now shows me my angles both laterally and forward and backward and then it also shows the um the system in terms of the four wheel drive where the power is going as well so it does change according to the the different sort of modes and the different information that the car thinks you will need in terms of information, well, there's actually plenty to see in front of the driver here. Starting off with the analog stuff, so you'll see there's a fuel gauge on the right side there, temperature gauge on the left side. Screen in the middle, that of course shows you the rev counter on the left, and then you get a nice big digital speed gauge over there, as well as things like your uh, compass, your direction, and then the, the gear mode, the range, the automatic headlights. As you can see, there's lots of stuff going on on both of these screens, plenty of different information provided to the driver. So if you have a lot of things in your mind, for example, you can actually engage calm mode. So that'll sort of just blank out the, um, the infotainment screen to some extent, just to help you keep a clear mind when you're driving after a rough day. So that's pretty thoughtful of Ford too. This steering wheel feels nice and solid. You've got some thumb grips there and that stitching as well in that gold slash yellow ochre color, which is customary with the wild track. The buttons over here, well, on the right side, you've got the different buttons that control the options in front of you on the screen there. So if you press the, those three lines there, you get to flick through the menu to customize that. Below that, you've got your audio sources, and on the left side, the cruise control as well. So there's a lot of different functionality that's integrated here for to make things easy for the driver. Speaking of making things easy for the, dr the driver, I know the Ford team have done plenty of research with existing Ranger owners, and that's really translated into the way this drives. So let's go and do that.
Now, actually, as I was saying before, that Ford have done so much of research on this new Ranger and the new Everest by just going around and spending time with people who already own the existing cars. So they actually, you know, spend time with tradies, spend time with owners, spend time with um, owners clubs, and even went to the Everest base camp with the Everest drive club. So they've really gone the whole way there in terms of finding out what people want from their Ranger and their Everest. One of the key things is, as you can see, Dave has just done, he's actually gone and put his arm on the top of the door. And what they notice is that Ranger drivers tend to do that a lot. So they've actually made it a soft touch material on the top there so you can rest your elbow comfortably. And comfort, comfort is the big or the big key thing of this. I mean, the suspension's nice. It's nice and comfortable as far as that goes. The seats are really comfortable. And there's things like being old school as I am. I like to rest my hand on the gear, the gear stick. And that, that's kind of nice and comfortable as well. There's substantial on your hand there. And so with this, I'm kind of all relaxed and ready to, I don't know, do the carpentry in your house or something. I don't know, or, or to fix your plumbing. The other thing is actually you'll notice very little engine noise in here. So the sound deadening in the cabin is another thing they really worked hard on because that the diesel engine noise, especially the V6 and even this bi turbo, it's just almost not there um, when you're in the cabin here, which is just an amazing improvement uh, in that sense. Yeah, I, I, we have driven the V6 and the, the thing with the V6 is there's a lovely whistle, the lovely turbo whistle as you're going along and uh, that's kind of nice. I can still hear the bi-turbo diesel, um, sort of the common rail stuff going on. I, I, there is, it's, it's, not, it's not like it's not a diesel, but it is a lot quieter than it's ever been. But then it's also a lot better on the road than it's ever been. It's such a, a well-planted vehicle absolutely right and Dave just said the wider track well that actually helps with improving what the rocking before when you go over you know ruts and stuff like that it's a lot less now with that wider stance and the suspension is so much more comfortable you almost forget that you're driving a truck like this yeah it does I'd, I'm not going to use the thing car like because I hate that sort of stuff but it really is quite quite normal small passenger vehicle like in terms of the other thoughtful things that they integrated after spending time with owners is the door handle. So the key there is actually the handles integrated now into the armrest. So it's just one motion to unlock the door and open it. Whereas before they noticed um, owners would pull the handle and then use their elbow to sort of leverage the door open. But that's gone now. It's just one motion. Nice and simple there. And the other motion is the fact that there's these small hidden cup holder bits that you can just pop open and as Matthew told us earlier, as she told me earlier, you can actually adjust your aircon temperature to keep your stuff either hot or cold. That makes perfect sense. It does. Visibility all round is good and the added bonus of having um, rear cross traffic or radar in the back in the back um, tail lights means that you do have blind spot monitoring and also yeah when you're pulling out of those shopping mall car parks there is cross traffic alert so again very <clears throat> small vehicle like and remember that unlike a small vehicle when you do hitch a trail on the back it will actually extend that radar um, or that area that it monitors in terms of the blind spot to accommodate for that additional lens or some really smart thinking there. The joys of this though is just how much they've, I mean, I don't know how many people will take this off off road, but it's just so capable now and the, the, the angles are good, the cameras are good. So if you're looking at those bits where you're, the windscreen's pointing towards the sky, the actual camera is looking at where you can go. So again, really thinking about those off road moments that you're fully laden with camping gear, you want to go off the grid, you just got your no, no range for your cell coverage no nagging by the wife and just away it's just great and i will actually touch on what dave just said about off-road um capability because they actually redefined the the truck durability standard with this new ranger and what they did they did about 1,250,000 kilometers worth of testing and a lot of that i think 
they did about 600 and something thousand of off-road testing 10,000 k's of desert driving and you know just insane um, they have really put the car through its paces when it comes to the testing phase so if you ever want to leave the limits of the city it's certainly got the capability to do so but i would say don't buy that vehicle it's very very used <laughs> So there you have it, two or three or five generations of people <laughs> discussing the next generation Raver, uh, Ranger, actually. It is improved. It's it as with every generation, things get better. And um it's and you know, this one has got wider, so there is the mixture of both. You'll see the puns that are coming off here. It is a wider track, it's a better planted vehicle, it drives a lot nicer, they've a lot more thought have gone into it as far as the end user has gone, and um, oh, it's just, a, it's a blast, it really is, it's the best selling vehicle in New Zealand right now, and this just takes it to a whole new level. It's just absolutely staggering to me how they could make it so much more competent off-road, while still being more comfortable for city and normal road driving, it's... How do those two things meet so well? There you go. It's like meeting an old friend. Ah, there you go. Thanks for watching. We will be doing more Ford stuff and also everything else going on, really. So make sure you subscribe. Do it now. See you next time.